1999 playoffs, the Lakers lost again. Swept this time by the less talented San Antonio Spurs. Antonio sweeps. Laker owner Jerry Buss, who had always avoided paying big money for coaching talent, bit the bullet and coughed up $30 million to bring Phil Jackson to L.A. The former Bulls coach had six championship rings and a talent for handling headstrong stars. Phil's a, a terrific communicator. Um, he's an excellent manager in, in terms of dealing with, uh, with players, uh, dealing with a team. But before Phil had a chance to work out a truce, Kobe and Shaq made their own attempt at reconciliation. The occasion was Kobe's 21st birthday at an L.A. restaurant. Shaq surprised everyone by showing up. Phil Jackson's most immediate challenge was how to reel in his young guard. I was like totally aghast at some points that he, you know, he overran his teammates. He chased the ball on offense to get to the basketball. Uh, he took shots with guys hanging on with teammates wide open. Phil worked to convince Kobe that the team's best route to winning was through Shaq. That it was all right to pass the ball because he'd get it back. This message was not new. Kobe had heard it countless times from Jerry West, Magic Johnson, Del Harris, and Kurt Rambis. But it took Phil Jackson to finally get through to him. The reason why I had genuine respect for Phil because I could tell right off the bat that he was serious about the game and that he loved the game. I think that Phil Jackson has been great for Kobe Bryant. He's stern, uh, but yet he'll give him a little bit of rope. But when he makes mistakes that are costly and makes mistakes that are where he's trying to do too much, Phil will remind him, and he'll also take him out of the game. The team just really came together. It was just a culmination of so many different things, and it was exciting. Uh, you know, Phil coming in and, and, and all of the ingredients that he brought to institute tremendous team play. Once they figured it out, everything fell into place. The Lakers finished off Portland. And then beat the Pacers in the finals. They were world champs at last. And then once we finally win it, it tastes really, really sweeter after you're going through some type of uh, adversity. He just wants to win. That's his attitude. He just wants to win the game. Win games, that's it. Both Kobe and Shaq had come to realize that the whole of their combined talents was greater than the sum of the parts. I think we just want to win the hockey. I think if you look in the past, like you look at Kareem, you look at Magic, he just passed them off. Kareem shot it. Magic loved to do that. And this team, Shaq and I, we're both, you know, quote unquote, killers. You like to go for your throat. It's just a matter of us finding out how we can do that and do it together. Kobe Bryant was on his way to achieving his ultimate goal, being the best ever. But now even he knew he couldn't do it alone. In April of 2001, just before the first round of the playoffs, Kobe Bryant married his 18-year-old sweetheart, Vanessa Lane, in a private ceremony. Because, you know, miss her so much. Like, when I travel, I'm going to the road, and she misses me so much. Um, but when, we come, when I come home, you know, you're just so happy to see the person. Uh, and she knows that this is my job, and this is what I have to do. And she knows how dedicated I am uh, to this game. And so our relationship is great. When the next season began, many of the old conflicts returned. Shaq complained that Kobe was hogging the ball again. And Shaq was throwing bricks from the free throw line. Peter Bessie. He missed them both. But when the playoffs arrived, the Lakers got down to business and played like a team. The best team in the league. Sixers to defend their title. Kobe came back from an ankle injury and stepped up, making the big shots. But Shaq got the MVP award. Kobe, if it wasn't for Shaquille, you know, could definitely have been in, in, in the MVP run. 
in the finals, um, I think proved that, you know, he'll go down in history as, as you know, one of the top two, three, four, five players um, to ever play this game. For the Los Angeles Lakers. Then, in February 2002, the prodigal son returned home to Philadelphia for the NBA All-Star Game. They weren't glad to see him. Kobe scored 31 points, was named MVP, but it was a painful reminder that to the Philly fans, Kobe was no hometown hero. He had left too quickly and too often. In their eyes, he would always be a stranger, but maybe Kobe the loner liked it that way. It had taken Kobe Bryant four years to mature to the level where he could help the Lakers win the NBA championship. Some thought those four years might have been better spent in college, away from the NBA spotlight. Kobe transgressed one of the things I think that's really a mistake. College is our farm system, basically, in the NBA. And I think that it's important that players go to that process, learn how to succeed in a peer group setting that's mostly their own age group. But if Kobe's was the road less taken, there's no doubt it got him to where he had always wanted to go. You know the saying that people say, uh, uh, the guy couldn't chew bubblegum and walk at the same time? He was like that early on, man. He worked his butt off, man. Uh, get to the point where he is now, it's, it's incredible. At the age of 23, he was already a five-year NBA veteran. He'd helped lead his team to two world championships and was heading for a third. Still, Kobe Bryant remained a work in progress. No one among us expected that he would become the number one American basketball player. I think he will play in the league for another 10 years or so, and he will leave the NBA with, with five or six rings and a Jordan-like legacy. He's going to be one of the best players to ever play this game. He has really scaled things back and has learned to use his teammates better. Uh, there's a tremendous room for improvement in him. He's going to be better than what he is today, and that's pretty scary. He was a team player now, but Kobe Bryant continued to go his own way. I constantly tell people, man, if you have a dream and you want to achieve something, don't let anybody tell you you can't achieve that. You can be whatever you want to be. You can strive for whatever you want to strive for. Don't let anybody tear you down.